So, uh, why don't we talk a little bit about the uh, secret DNS technique of reflex locomotion? The only reason I want to talk about it a little bit is because yeah. the subject, came, like it does from time to time, came up at a course that I uh, taught a couple weeks ago. The students uh, were asking, uh, you know, what is this reflex locomotion we heard about? Can you show us reflex locomotion? Uh, and I, I mean, in, in one sense, I kind of laughed. I was like, how did you even hear about this? You know, who mm -hmm. told you about reflex locomotion? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I went on to explain a little bit of what it, what the concept was during the break or after the, at the end of the mm -hmm. day. And they were intrigued. Of course, it's intriguing. Um, you know, when you took the courses originally, the first courses, and I took my first courses, this uh, concept of reflex locomotion was a part of the course. Uh, it's no longer a part of the course, but I thought maybe we can talk about it because it does have, uh, it. I think it fits into the neurophysiologic effect on the body that has a global effect that we've kind of been talking about. So if somebody or if a student were to ask you, what is reflex locomotion? I heard this term. What What is it? <laughs> I would say refer to your manual, your DNS <laughs> manual. <laughs> and if you find it there, read up the chapter. No. Uh, <laughs> a reflex locomotion is a, as I think, a unique technique that is born out of the Voiter approach to habilitation of children um, and the treatment of children with movement uh, disorders and delays, developmental right. delays. It is, a, it is founded on empirical uh, observation and experiments that look at uh, facilitating through afferents um, the basic uh, movement patterns of turning and crawling that go to make up all our uh, gross motor pattern functions. Um, so the points, there appear to be, um, as you know, areas of sensitivity on the body, some more sensitive than others, which elicit localized muscle activity, often preceded by a change in the breathing pattern. Um, which is a sign of diaphragmatic facilitation. And so uh, when we again have a um, uh, look at our patient, <coughs> excuse me, um, we are looking for certain signs of physiological response to the pressures that are applied to areas of um, seemingly concentrated afferents. Um, capacity. Mm -hmm. So there are, if I recollect, I think nine basic Voiter points that were used for this. And reflex locomotion is a skilled application of combinations of these points uh, in certain positions that will elicit uh, the locomotion or turning uh, function pattern. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I concur. That's exact. That is exactly what it is. I guess, in more practical terms, like you mm -hmm. said, Voita himself developed this technique based on his own uh, experience working with uh, infants and children with more or less significant uh, movement disorders, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> practically speaking, uh, you know, I. I am a pediatric practitioner, so I see pediatrics. And obviously, it's one thing to work with an adult and try to tell them what to do and how to move and what to feel, and that the adult can respond back to you. Um, it's another thing to work with a six-month-old infant to try to get them to do particular things. Obviously, they have, they have no ability to respond to you or anything you're telling them. So the placing of infants 
like Voight did into particular positions and essentially applying pressure to specific mm -hmm. areas, mm -hmm. um, whether, you know, in the rib cage or at a particular weight bearing point and applying that pressure in a particular direction with a particular force, he seemed to find that he got a repeatable, consistent um, physiologic effect. And like you said, in the form of initially good quality diaphragmatic breathing with some, for lack of a better term, abdominal bracing, a formation of the of good yes. quality proximal stability with diaphragm breathing. And that then elicited either turning, the function of turning or the function of crawling or locomotion based on the position you were in That's and right. found it was very helpful, you know, obviously mm -hmm. uh, to elicit that. And then, of course, I think, you know, he extended that to treatment of adults with mm -hmm. severe neurologic disorders who couldn't get at these patterns or had a very difficult mm -hmm. time. So, you know, like you said, it's it's a manual treatment um, like any other manual treatment. Um, it's not magic. It's not uh, the cure-all. It's not, um, if you ask me how many patients I did that, uh, I use it on or use it on, I couldn't even tell you the last time I used it, at least on an adult patient necessarily, mm -hmm. because, you know, the effects of DNS uh, and the use of the DNS positions and just some basic handling that DNS provides has been sufficient. You don't, you, mm -hmm. you don't need to regress. Um, all the way yes, down to I region, think... So. It is used for rebooting the system when the patient has poor abilities to follow instruction exactly. or does not feel or has a sense of aesthesis for that motion or position or area. Then it helps to uh, kickstart the, the program of movement strategy that integrates that area that the patient has a lack of control or sensation over. Um, I think that once if um, the, the its use becomes melded into the um, into the um, what would you say um, the handling of the into exercise. the handling of the patient. So, um, yes, I cannot tell you that I do often pure reflex locomotion, but I'm right. always blending it into the way in which I approach, approach the patient and the way in which I apply the exercises. I think by doing so, it gives it a greater range of application throughout the day, and it does not... Um, limited to just uh, the application of pressures and waiting for the physiological response. Yeah, um, it's not even so though you passive. Are, yes, even though you are looking for these uh, responses uh, in, to some degree, because the reactivity of each patient is different, you need to be aware that you can still apply it and use it effectively um, without being bowled over by some unexpected uh, strong physiological response that you are waiting for or expecting. Um, I think there is so much more to the, to the use of it um, by being flexible in its application. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you enjoyed this conversation and want to hear more like it, then please like this video and subscribe to our channel. You can also stay up to date on our latest seminars on our social media pages on Instagram and Facebook at IMTR Seminars.